Hello YouTube, Bane666 here. Whoa, how the hell did I end up here? I guess now that I've got a real audience for a change, I should probably be a little more serious for this video. Hello there Bane's audience, my name's Felfop. Now in February of 2016, my ex hid my then six-year-old son from me. She took him and hid him and wouldn't let me see him for visitation and wasn't taking him to school or anything that he was supposed to be doing. Now I knew that she was into hard drugs and she was abusive and it was quite a battle that pretty much emptied my pockets and uh, changed my life considerably. In September of 2015, I found out where he was and... I got him back temporarily and with CPS's support that became permanent and in November of 2015 I got full legal custody of my son. He was emotionally and physically abused by her during those seven months and had no education really at all when I got him but he's doing great now I'm happy to say and um, it's kept me in the game. I, I made my first YouTube videos trying to uh, just find him, just trying to look for my son. and. Then I stayed in it afterwards and still make videos. A lot of the times I don't really reference father's rights nearly as much as I probably should, I guess. But I try to attract as much attention as I possibly can because when I make a video on father's rights, it really doesn't get very much traffic at all. And I know that in order to get the word out, I need more subscribers, basically. So I try to get subscribers by farming them and other methods and then hit them with some father's rights. But Bane already has a lot of subscribers, so I'm going to hit you guys with some father's rights. Now, I help out a number of dads. There's not a whole lot, but there's about a half a dozen or so guys that I've been able to stay in a decent amount of contact with and give them some assistance. And there's two guys that I know for a fact that I've helped, and there's a few others that they haven't contacted me back, so I'm you know hoping that I at least did them some good. But one of the guys that I'm working with now actually sent me some paperwork from his legal case. Now, his he hasn't seen his kids in quite a while, and the guardian ad litem, which is an attorney that is assigned to the case to represent the best interest of the child, made recommendations that he be allowed to see his children again. Now, her attorney, his ex-wife's attorney, protested that. And I want to read you the statement. This is, this is the kind of thing that fathers face. Listen to how, how little the system values fathers. The petitioner objects to recommendation number two, visitation. This is a premature recommendation and not in the best interest of the children as they have had no contact with respondents since 2014 and should participate in supervised therapeutic reunification prior to visits. The child's therapist was never interviewed as part of this process to determine the psychological or emotional best state or best interest of the children regarding visits and reintegration again with the children and the respondent. Respondent has not seen his children since the third session of the last attempt at reintegration therapy in August 2014. The well-being of the children is not being taken into consideration and is detrimental for them for the respondent to continue coming in and out of their lives. Additionally, the proposed schedule is onerous for the children. They participate in sports and activities as well as have homework commitments in the evening. The children will have approximately 40 minutes travel time each way and then a one hour graduating up to one and a half hours, two and then three times a week. This will involve children spending over an hour in transport and then a visit which will compromise the entire evening two to three times per week which will interfere with their homework and evening routines. Now for those of you who don't speak legalese, what that basically was saying is the father hasn't seen the kids in a couple of years. The kids have schoolwork and homework and baseball and the dad will just get in the way of all of that so we're not going to do it. No, by the way, he sees a therapist. And the reason that he sees a therapist, I should mention, is he witnessed a terrible crime when he was a very young child. But this is what men face. This is what fathers face. And when you get into it that deep, as he is in the case, when he's got you know the state attorney that represents the child um, going to bat for him, and he's having to still fight with his ex's attorney and go back and forth, that's one thing. But... And I can't really help you a lot at that point. That's really on you and your attorney. Um, but what I can help with here is I would like to give uh, five th tips, basically, to help fathers out when they're going into family court battles. Now, the number one thing is do not procrastinate. 
They will give you hoops to jump through and they will give you paperwork to fill out. Get it done as soon as possible. Get it filled in as soon as possible. If you need a lawyer, hire your attorney as soon as possible. If you need to serve her papers, serve her papers as soon as possible. Do not drag your feet on anything. That's a very big deal. It shows that this is very important to you and it also does not give her the opportunity to say, well, look, he hasn't seen his kids in two years and it will shake their life up if he doesn't see him. Number two is don't give up any of your rights. Now, one of the guys that I helped out, he was having a problem where his ex wouldn't let him take the kids from her house when it was time for visitation. And he didn't have supervised visitation. He had court-ordered unsupervised visitation. But his ex wasn't letting him, would always threaten to call the police. And he was completely at a loss of how to handle it. And I told him just to tell her that he was going to start using a cell phone to record their interactions, record her saying this, and that he was going to turn it over to the police. Now, whether or not that would do him a lot of good depends on what state he's in and the laws and blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of these people want to be seen in a good light. These moms don't want to be seen as the parent who is in the wrong they want to look like they're the ones that are doing things proper. They don't want the court or anyone else to think that they're bad. So it's simply that threat was enough to get things done. But there'll be a lot of things that come up on the court paperwork. You'll be asked um, to whether, you know, about uh, educational decisions, religious decisions, things like this that a lot of states allow parents to negotiate. Give up none of that. Anything that you give up shows a lack of interest. You want to show that you are very interested in your child's well-being and future. Number three is attend every class and meeting that the court orders or says that they would like you to do. And if your ex is telling you that you can't see your kids or they're telling the courts that you shouldn't see your kids, odds are they're going to put some classes on you. Most likely anger management, maybe domestic violence, maybe a parenting class take all of them everything they tell you to do and don't be combative or argumentative when you're in there act engaged and i know that part is eating shit it really is but you there's that's all there is to it they're going to tell you that guys are bad and it's going to be this feminist invention that you you have to eat crow numerous times in order to get through the mess that is family court and that's just it is what it is your kids are worth it so there it is. Now, number four slightly relates to number three. Find out what they're going to, what they frequently order fathers to do. If they almost always send dads to, in my case, it was a nurturing fatherhood class here in the state of Washington. The best thing that I recommend guys in Washington to do is to go take that class immediately. As soon as, as, soon as she starts doing bullshit and starts holding, withholding visitation from you, Enroll in that nurturing father class because there's they, they have this trick. There's a number of tricks, but one of them is to delay you seeing your children as long as possible. So then they can say, well, they haven't seen the kid in two years. So what are we supposed to do? Like the letter that I read at the beginning. So the one of the best ways to avoid this is to jump hurdles before they put them in front of you. You'll go to court and their lawyer will be, well, you know, we're not comfortable until he's taken this fatherhood class and until he's taken an anger management class. And you already know that this is the most common tactic in your state. So you just hand them the certificates that shows you've already completed them and you can short circuit an opposing attorney's argument. They might not be prepared for another reason to argue against it on the fly. So you can really do something by being preemptive and the fifth thing that I would recommend would be establish and or showcase your stability in court. Um, it's very important to have a stable home to have your kids at for a visit. It's very important to have enough money and enough food in the fridge and all of that stuff. And it's very important that you're able to portray that in court any time that it's challenged. Because again, they put up hurdles. You have to be ready to jump on me immediately. Having a nice stable job, having a nice stable house, having a good place for the kid to sleep when they're there with you, having toys and movies and books and games that are age appropriate. Uh, all this stuff is will, can matter. And you may have a home inspection as part of the mess. It depends on your state. It depends on the law. And it depends on the accusations she levies against you. But 
show and this also comes to emotional stability show them in court don't give the judge the glare when the judge says something you don't want to hear put your head down if you must but listen to what they have to say do not act like you're angry about it show that you're emotionally stable and that your home is stable that your situation is stable the kids are safe with you they will have a stable environment with you this is very important as well now obviously this is by no means comprehensive nor will all of these things help every guy out there but this is a good general set of guidelines and there's a couple of tricks in there that can help you out um no i would point out one thing that a mother that is hiding her children or not letting the father see the children estranging alienating whatever word you want to use a mother that will take her kids and not let them see their father for an extended period of time in order to spite him is emotionally damaging those children she and she knows it she knows she's hurting those kids and she's not caring about it and while in a lot of situations, otherwise good parents would do these things. Parents that would never otherwise hurt their children, but their anger towards their ex is so powerful that they hurt their kids emotionally. This can also pronounce itself in very ugly and disgusting ways. Following breaking news right now, chilling details released in court documents tonight about the murders of a young brother and sister in Montgomery County. The children's mother admitting to police she stabbed her seven-year-old son and three-year-old daughter. RTV6's Mike Pelton is live at the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department in Crawfordsville with the breaking details there. Mike. Well, Jason, uh, prosecutors late this afternoon filed two counts of murder, two charges against Brandy Worley in the death of her two kids. And in court documents just released late this afternoon, it shows the apparent motive was the fear of losing her kids and a pending divorce. Seven-year-old Tyler and three-year-old Charlie Worley were found dead inside their Darlington home on Thursday morning. Late Friday afternoon, court documents reveal what happened inside the Worley home. Authorities say Brandy Worley called 911 on Thursday, saying she stabbed herself and killed her two kids. In court records, investigators arrived to find the children with cuts to their neck. We discovered Brandy Worley's husband filed for divorce on Wednesday, and Brandy told investigators on Thursday, quote, I did not want him taking them, so I stabbed them. Brandy Worley's husband was asleep at the time in the basement, and Brandy told investigators, quote, I just wanted to die with them. Since the deaths, neighbors described to us a seemingly happy family. Seven-year-old Tyler was a student at Sugar Creek Elementary. Court records show an autopsy revealed both kids died from stab wounds to their necks. And in court records, investigators say when Brandy Worley's husband came up from the basement, she told him, quote, now you can't take the kids from me. Well, thanks for taking the time to listen, and, uh, Maybe hop on over to my channel and subscribe. Hint, hint, hint. Plug, plug, plug. Thanks, Bane.